Hi, and welcome to the Brilliant Perspectives podcast with Graham Cook. I'm your host, Michael Becchio. In this episode, I'm including part of an audio clip where Graham dives into a dialogue with his co-host, Lindsay Van Zale, around the prophetic word he gave entitled Acceptance, which was the main content for our previous podcast episode. If you haven't heard that one yet, you might want to go back and listen to it first. Both that episode and this one come from our last featured challenge event titled The Way God Walks With Us. In these dialogues that Graham does on the final day of a challenge, he breaks down the keys from the prophetic word, the fantastic implications they have in our lives, and their application in our relationship with God. He also shares stories and testimonies that reveal what these truths can look like in our own journey. In this particular discussion, Graham shares about a dream he had with Jesus and how profoundly it impacted a turning point in his life with God. It's absolutely lovely. I'm sure you'll be blessed and left thinking about it for days to come. Enjoy this final episode of special content from our last featured challenge, and take what you learn, receive it into your own dialogue, and walk with Jesus. He is waiting for you, beloved. Oh, I almost forgot. Our next featured challenge is coming up soon, starting Wednesday, April 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. I think you should check it out and would love to have you join us. They have been a massive blessing to our community. To learn more, go to challenge.gramcook.com. Once again, that's challenge.gramcook.com. I'll include the link in the description for you of this episode. All right, on to Graham. Be blessed and enjoy. If you're new to these challenges, what Graham and I like to do is we like to process with you guys um, after a prophetic word like that is shared, just to show you how we process and delight in what the Lord has shared. And so Graham, something that stuck out to me throughout this entire word is that acceptance is a big deal to God. Oh and so yeah, it needs, absolutely. It needs to be a big deal to me. Yeah, right. It's the big thing. I mean, that that was their plan all along was is to recover everything that we have lost by not being in fellowship. So They've got promises over our lives that we've never heard because we weren't in a place to listen to them. So there's a lot of things stacked up. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I love that, that, you know, um, I was, I remember the time when God said to me, Graham, heaven is not a storage facility. You know, there's a lot of blessing up here that needs to come down. You need to be asking me for more. You know, there are unclaimed upgrades all over your life right now. So we need to get rid of some of these stuff out of heaven so we can make room for new stuff for you. So how about for the next 12 months, you just have a time of receiving? And I feel that's what, in my heart, that's what God is saying through this challenge is, how about for the next 12 months, you just let me give you stuff. All the things you've never let me give you. Let me give you peace. Let me give you joy. Let me give you provision. Let me give you blessing. Let me give you promises. So I want to teach you about what being accepted means. So I'm going to accept you right where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're doing well or badly. It's irrelevant to me. You're in Jesus. So how about we do a whole year of you just learning to receive? So think about a bunch of stuff that you really want in your relationship with the Lord. Think about things around you that you want to see change and come and ask because, you know, um, when I grant you something like this, I expect you to take me for granted. So let's spend a year just, I'm saying yes. So let's just spend a year of you asking and receiving and especially acceptance. It's the key. You know, that pushes away all stress, all strain, all negative, all negativity. It's a key. You're in me and I'm in you. And we love being in you. We'd like you to love being in us. <laughs> yeah, I've already decided that I'm going to be spending at least a year <laughs> until further notice with this word. Because I realize, you know, it is a big deal to God. And acceptance right. needs to be what I think the most about. Yeah. Yeah. I think the enemy has robbed us of so much by lying to us about a lack of acceptance. And I'm just not putting up 
with that anymore in my life. Right. What, what stood out right. to me and, and, and um, what I'm referencing for everyone watching it is this transcript. So I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but the transcript's here. And then there's a place for you to just jot notes and things that resonate, thing that things that the Holy Spirit highlight. Brilliant. And so for me on page okay. three, something that stuck out was when they said, you have a place of acceptance and affection in my heart, just as Jesus does in yeah. the same way. Now, right. for me, <laughs> what often resonates the most are those truths that seem too good to be true, where it stops me in my tracks and I'm like, yes. is that true? Yeah. And this was real? one, this was <laughs> one, is that real? And so yeah. I just want to, if you don't mind, I'm going to share because it reminded me of Jesus's prayer in John 17. In verse 23, he says, I and them and you and me. He's praying to the Father about us. And he says that they may become perfectly one. So the world may know that you have sent me and loved them, even as you have loved me. God loves us just as he loves Jesus. Is yeah. that not mind blowing? I know it's wild. It's totally wild. Um, I think one of my uh, favorite parts when I was writing it that really impacted me um, as I was um, just taking dictation from the Lord, just feeling his heart. And one of the big things in his heart for us is that we should be debt free. You know, that G Jesus paid a price. And um, I've shared this story before, but it might be worth sharing now. Is I remember um, I've always had these dreams uh, with the Lord for I don't know how many years, but, and in the dream, you know, I'm in heaven and there's a particular hill with like a pavilion on it. And you go inside and there's all this great food, you know, brilliant cheeses and, um, and great wine, you know, because I'm a European. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then I hear the noise and I, and I walk out of the pavilion and there's Jesus walking up the hill towards me. And he's surrounded by people. And, you know, there's kids like dancing in front of him, you know, guys that are laughing with him grandmothers that are trying to kiss him and all of that stuff. And, and he looks up and he sees me and he waves. And he's like, I'll be there in a minute. Yeah. And then he comes in and he gives me this biggest hug. And then he wants to serve me food. Then we sit and we just talk. And, and that's my dream. And then when I wake up, I have almost perfect recall. So I have to sit down for like several hours. And a lot of my messages come from those times. But there was this occasion, I was in the pavilion, and, and suddenly I heard these tramping feet, like, you know, stomping feet. And I thought, I've never heard that sound before. And so I looked out, and it's just Jesus by himself. And he's looking up at me, and he's like glaring at me. And I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on. But I retreat back into, you know, I don't know why, because it's, the whole pavilion is made of cloth. So, but, I, but I'm standing there and I hear him stamping up and the curtain gets shoved back and he comes in and he looks at me and he says, Graham, give it back to me. Oh, what do you mean? Give it back to me. You took something that belongs to me, give it back to me. And I come, but I don't, everything I have you gave me, no. That's true on one level, but you took something of mine that doesn't belong to you and can never belong to you. Give it back to me. And I'm going, but I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what, I, I don't know what it is. What? And I'm crying. Lord, please, I don't know what it is. Tell me what it is. And he said, anger, fear, rejection, humiliation. Um, and he began listing all these negative things. And I looked at him and he said, Graham, I died for them. I paid a price for them so that you would never have to feel it. Give it back to me. You're in the new man. You can't have those things. 
Give it back to me. They don't belong to you. They're going to kill you. That's why I allowed myself to be killed, so that you wouldn't. And then, I'm, and then I got it. I think, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then he smiled at me. And honestly, it was like getting saved. <laughs> and then he picked me up and he hugged me for the longest time. And he kissed me on both cheeks. And he, looked, he held me at arm's length and he said, you see it now, don't you? Why it was necessary for me to die for everything. So you would never have to feel those things. That's what being in me really means. That's why the new man is so vital. Because a new man has access to a whole new set of emotions, thoughts, and language. And then we sat down and we talked about it. And out of that, I wrote the new man series. Because he just captured my heart, you know. So... And I love the comment he made to me. He said, when I was hanging on the cross, I was grateful to the Father because I was robbing you of all of those negatives. And you would never have to feel them again. You would just feel my peace and my joy and my delight. And that's why we do what we do on Brilliant TV. You know, that encounter shook me to the core because I, I saw the purpose of God. And it all begins with acceptance, Lindsay. Oh, I love that story, <laughs> Graham. Every time you share that story, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> because the sweetness I of, I think, the, um, the expectation of uh, the old dead me, if Jesus were to glare in that way, it would be like, I have so messed up. And what right. he was going to do was take right. his stuff back so that right. we, so that you and all of us could receive the true yeah. gift that he's given us that you mentioned in this prophetic word, the yeah. grace and the righteousness and, of course, acceptance. Right. And, and what I don't want people to miss here, because people are obviously commenting, it is such a powerful story. And someone even said, oh, you know, I wish I had dreams like that. I wish I had encounters. And you can. I absolutely believe right. you can. But something I don't want you to miss is that, Graham, you had to agree in that moment with what Jesus was right. saying. Right. There was no longer right. this defense or fighting off the truth or saying, no, that seems too good to be true. Or are you sure, Jesus? And and in this prophetic word, they mention, you know, on page four, it's when the word is challenged by the enemy, by circumstances, by your own weakness, you can find a place of acceptance by your agreement with me. And agreements mentioned actually several times in this word. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that partnership of agreement and acceptance? Because it's a gift we're given, but we have to agree right. and receive it. Yeah, you have to accept it. It's just like any other gift you've ever had. You know, you have to accept it. Yeah, and you have to receive it and you have to embrace it. And uh, what appalled me in that dream was... Um, when he started mentioning all my negatives that were right there in my life, I'd been a Christian for like around 10, 15 years at that point. And what appalled me was that I had never been taught this, never been taught it. And um, that I didn't know that that was available. And I didn't know that, you, you know, that really my whole behavior unconsciously was dishonoring him. And when he said, give me back my stuff, and the fact that he took ownership of everything that I was not, you know? He took ownership so that I don't have to. And the agreement really is to enter into the partnership that says, I am no longer going to be engaged with the old. I'm not working on the old. I'm actually just going to focus on the new because that's what God is doing. Ephesians 4, 20 to 24 says, you know, lay, talks about laying aside the old, being renewed in your mind, and then working and putting on the new and working on the new. God is never going to work on your old stuff. Jesus died. You know, he took it to the cross. He left it in hell. When he resurrected out of there, none of that followed him. 
and we were in him. And when we were resurrected in newness of spirit, none of our old stuff followed him. So the enemy has lied to us. Religion has lied to us. Legalism has lied to us. And we are none of those things. We are a whole new creation. All the old has passed away. Everything's become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is our inheritance. That we only work on the new with God. And that is infinitely more pleasurable and delightful. That he's not working on the old. He's not saying, you know, stop doing that. He's just saying, why don't you start doing this? You know, when I was talking to him about, you know, years ago about stress. And he said, Graham, there is no stress. There's just peace in me. And what you're telling me is indirectly is you need more peace. All righty then. <laughs> I am the Prince of Peace. How much do you want? Really, we, you know, and that's the delightful thing about the new man is we're learning brilliant new things all the time in Jesus. So we're, I feel like I'm constantly astonished <laughs> about who God is and what God is like for us. And this like new man series and the new man theology is so interwoven to really everything in brilliant TV. Right. right. Um, it, it's not like a one time message. It's a lifestyle. Right. Right. <laughs> and so that's right. what I've so appreciated about being a part of the brilliant TV community is there's been such an increase for me in becoming aware and alive to the fullness right. of all we have in Christ. And I've so appreciated right. you and the brilliant team for really just investing so yeah. much into the brilliant TV community. You know, we want truth to be a renewable lifestyle simply because jesus wants to be more real to us than anything we are facing in life and the new man in christ is designed to be overwhelmed by god and by nothing else so that was btv it was a renewable lifestyle you could keep coming back to the same series next year and a year after and there'll be something else because all of our truth is layered. So you'll meet it right where you are and it will change you. And then six months later, you'll go through the same episode again and you'll see something more. And that will change you because it will change you because you're ready to be changed because you're on this journey. So there's layers of truth in Brilliant that apply to you all the time. So we're constantly faced with something that says, hey, this is who you are. No, but really, this is who you are. And this is what we're working on with you. And, and we're learning that it's not that our life situations get smaller. It is that we get bigger. And, and that's because God's plans for us are always bigger than the situations that we're facing. And our only real challenge, I think, here is to discover and occupy the identity in Jesus that is available to us all the time.